What is up YouTube? That's it here and today I'm bringing you guys a quick little video giving you guys an update for the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl 6v6 singles OU ladder talking about the recent ban on some very specific abilities that being things like Sand Veil, Snow Cloak and also including Bright Powder and Lax Incense. Now I just want to give my thoughts on whether these things should be banned, whether they're good enough to be banned. And uh, to do that, we're going to go right to Smogon. We're going to have a link to this article and this whole thread where they talk about all basically the rules for the format. We're going to talk about their thoughts on the ban, my thoughts on the ban. And we're going to also go break down a little bit more of what this ban does in conjunction with all the other rules. I get people, people ask me all the time, that's a, what are the rules for singles, right? Uh, they don't know all the different clauses. So we're going to be using this as a refresher course for anyone looking to get into competitive play as well. So right off the bat, this is Eve. This is the person that's basically in charge of the OU council, the people that decide the rules for Smogom based off like years and years of competitive play. If you don't like Smogom, that's completely fine. I personally like to play Smogom rules. I think that any community that comes together to try to make the game more competitive, try to make it a better, more balanced game with, uh, you know, a good heart, uh, with the, you know, the goal of the game being better in mind, means they're doing a good job, at least in my opinion. I voted in these type of things before as well, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. But uh, let's go right into it. So they say, hi all, this is a public service announcement. Following Sword and Shield, OU's decision to ban Bright Powder, Lax Incense, Sand Veil, and Snow Cloak, we have unanimously decided to do the exact same thing. This shouldn't really change things much, but this is where it's really good. It says, but losing to people that deliberately run worse sets for a chance to win about 10% of their games, right? That's what it is. You know, that you get at like a 10% boost, a 10 to 20% boost of a, from like Sandvale and Snow Cove and stuff like that. It's 10% for moves like, for items like Bright Powder and Lax Incense, and it's 20% for Sandvale and Snow Cove. So they take a little bit more team building to use the uh, last two, but uh, I agree. These are not very competitive abilities or competitive items. Trying to steal games instead of like actually playing is not conductive to competitive play. And removing it is basic or is a blatantly good decision. I, I agree. Um, obviously, I like Sand Veil. Uh, I like Snow Cloak. I, whenever I see a Titar hit the board and I'm like, it's time for my Garchomp to go out and you sub until they miss. And again, that's something that I like. I think it's fun. I think it's entertaining. It means it adds a little bit of RNG to the game. But at the end of the day, they are correct. It is not conductive to competitive play so i don't think this is that big of a deal i think the biggest problem is like for me and a lot of other people that already bred pokemon that have these abilities naturally things like uh garchomp's basic ability sand veil so like i'm gonna have to re-get a garchomp with rough skin which is a better ability but i i like my sand veil garchomp i've always been happy with it like mammoth swine has like snow cloak as one of its basic abilities frostlass base ability is gonna be snow cloak these are things that have to be changed um a lot of people the reason i think it actually got banned was a lot of people were using like Gliscor with Sam Bale. Remember they used T-Tar to set the sand or Hippowdon, go near Gliscor. Double team's obviously not active, but it, people use, use sets like this in doubles. Like this is completely legal in doubles because it's harder to get away with this in doubles. Uh, that's a lot of the things that are legal in singles. Sorry, a lot of the things that are legal in doubles aren't really legal in singles and like vice versa. For example, like this set, I think Moxie Boosted featured it recently. It's a lot harder to get away with this and set this up correctly when you're fighting two things at the same time as opposed to just fighting one in singles. So let's go right into taking a look at like what the rules even are for these formats. Because again, a lot of people ask me this a lot. So the rules are going to be, you can see the battle clauses down here. We're going to scroll it up a little bit. So the sleep clause, this is something that comes up a lot in my videos. So a player cannot put two or more different opposing Pokemon to sleep using attacks that induce sleep to opposing Pokemon. Um, so you can't just spore everything, right? That's breaking the sleep clause. If you want to break the sleep clause, you want to play with clauses, that's fine. You're not playing smog on rules. The only thing I would say is, if someone requests a battle of smog on rules, you should try to at least abide by these. It's good sportsmanship. So species clause. A player cannot have two of the same Pokemon on their team. For example, a player cannot have two coughing on their team. I remember before this was a rule, uh, I played an event that didn't have a species clause. Maybe they forgot it. Maybe it was, it was around the time when it wasn't really required. And I used a rain team. And I, I, I used my Azelf. I set rain dance and I had three Kingdras. I won. I won the tournament. Um, so yeah, this is pretty balanced and you shouldn't be able to have this. The cool thing about those Kingdras was two were physical and one was like, sorry, two were special and one was physical. And so like after they KO'd one, I sent out another one. They're like, oh, I'll go to my special wall. This worked against the last Kingdra and I <laughs> dragon dance in their face and just <laughs> messed them all up. So it's, you can see how that can start to get a little bit uncompetitive, a little bit dicey. The evasion clause. A player cannot use moves like double team or minimize on their Pokemon's move set. So this Sand Veil thing is kind of getting a added to the evasion clause, which I, I think it, 
it's a step in the right direction. And obviously, as people who play Pokemon, we like having access to as many tools as possible. We like having access to Sand Veil, Bright Powder, Quick Claw, all those weird random RNG items. They're what make the game fun. And anytime you remove options, it does remove a little bit of fun, but hopefully you guys agree with me that it's probably a step in the right direction. The oh, uh, the one hit KO Claws. Players cannot use Horn Drill, Guillotine, Sure Cold, Fisher. So you can't use those moves either. And I scrolled all the way down to the page because I clicked the thing. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, go all the way back up. All right, so yeah, you can't use Oko moves. You can't use Oko moves, and uh, they're just not balanced. They hit about 33% of the time, and uh, again, that's just RNG. You should be trying to win your games by outplaying opponents, not by, uh, you know, abusing them by RNG. Timer Claws, if a player exhausts their timer, they lose. It's kind of the same way in BDSP. Um, endless Battle Claws, this is a, a newer one. Any moveset on a Pokemon that is capable of intentionally causing endless battles banned from play, so things like lumberry recycle and having infinite pp with like regenerator switching and stuff like that stuff like that um but that's generally the rules those are basically the rules for small gun note that this didn't say item clause item clause is not against the rules you can have six leftovers six focus sashes six choice scarves six choice bands whatever you want and that's one of the things that makes smog on such a fun format you can say well that's that's not very competitive it's rng not knowing what their items are is it are you sure because like if you have a team of six pokemon i can see what those six pokemon are in the team preview and a good players once you get past like the 12 1300 level you can generally deduce what items are on those pokemon just by basic competitive play sure they can mix up items every once in a while but maybe they'll show a move on one of their pokemon that will tell me that oh if they're using this move on this pokemon that means that they need to cover up for that speed tearing somewhere else so maybe that latius or maybe that uh gliscor maybe that garchomp might be scarfed to make up for this and you can start putting those two and two together and that's how you can start like analyzing their team based off what their other Pokemon does. So you can see it's still a competitive situation in that regard. Obviously, if you like item claws, that's completely fine. But Smogon doesn't play with an item claws. So I'm done answering the question of why I have so many leftovers in my team. Because that's the rules of the format. If you don't have it, you're playing with the hand tie behind your back. And that's not what I'm about. I want to play fun, even balanced games. But uh, other than that, please let me know what you think about these rules. Obviously, I'm sad that i have to reread a new garchomp and get one with a hidden ability for rough skin but i'm i'm on it right now if you guys like smog on rules you guys have any questions about them you can always leave those in the comments below but other than that just want to give a quick little video talking about the brand new uh you know bands to things like sand veil and uh and snow cloak let me know what you guys think about them and other than that peace out i'll see you guys next time